Hey guys, welcome back to another video on PyTorch. So we will continue on the series and today we will talk about something different. This is <clears throat> more about how to make your models more efficient than actually learning about PyTorch. So um, this is typically what you would have in a production environment. So how to squeeze out more performance out of your model. And um, I'm not too familiar with this topic. So um, so this will be a superficial treatment of sorts. So basically, we will be talking about torch.jit or just-in-time module. Okay, so um, um, great. Python, uh, PyTorch is good because it's in Python, it's Pythonic, and um, it makes it easier for us to write code and all that jazz. But then um, being in Python, it's also very restrictive as well because Python is not as high performing as C++ and um, it has the global interpretation lock um, and so on. So that it's very restrictive. So in a production setting, you want your model to be um, portable, right? So um, it should be deployed in different sorts of devices, um, C++ servers to mobiles. And um, you also want the performance to be high. So now, unfortunately, because PyTorch is so tightly coupled with Python, it makes it um, difficult to be portable. And also, um, you cannot apply a lot of optimization when you are restricted to the realm of Python language. So to mitigate this, PyTorch has a different mode or um, has a kind of like a compiler built in, which is called a torch script. So when you're in the Python land, um, you are in the eager mode of execution. So this is where you'll use uh, for prototyping, training, and experimenting. So eager mode means things are evaluated as quickly as soon as you type them. So this is, um, you know, the, the, PyTor the PyTorch that we've seen so far and love so far. Now script mode is basically a separate uh, form. So basically what happens is um, in script mode, Torch script compiler comes in and takes your model and re uh, reduces it to um, an intermediate representation. Now this in intermediate representation can be um, fused, can be compiled, and then uh, you know optimizations can be done to it. So this is where you want to be when you're deploying or when you're squeezing out extra performance out of your model. So the good thing is that you don't have to write things from scratch and it's not a new language and PyTorch provides you tools to go from eager mode if you have your code in eager if you have your PyTorch code convert that into torch script code so um, all you need to do is either use script or trace function and we will see uh, what these do okay so let me um, first talk about torch script so uh, right let me so this page is the introduction to TorchScript, and it tells you that TorchScript is an IR of PyTorch model. And basically, it makes your model executable in different environments, in C++ and so on. So if you have like a PyTorch model, and I convert them, convert it into a TorchScript model, the TorchScript model just contains a representation of it, and that representation can be used in any language to deploy it on uh, wherever you wish. So that's what a uh, touch script is. Um, and there's a nice description here. Right, so, um, so first of all, why do we want to do that? So touch script code can be invoked by its own interpreter. So it's not restrictive to Python interpreter. So that, that way, um, you know, you can squeeze out multi-threaded uh, as performance out of it. And um, it's easier to store these models. So it allows you to save the whole model and then load it into a, um, a different environment. So now when you're in Python, you're kind of restricted because you need to have the Python class file for your model and then you load in the weights. But here you can serialize and store the whole model. So that's one advantage as well. And then it gives you a represent, it gives a representation and um, like intermediate representation on which compiler optimizations can be applied. So um, so that's that's why it's kind of useful. Right, so 
the main thing about Torch script is uh, the main two functions useful are script and trace. And we will see how each of them work. So on a higher level, what happens is um, when I, so they, they kind of work the same way, but when you call script and trace, you need to specify a dummy input as well. And um, what this does is it basically creates a computation graph. So once the computation graph is created, it stores that computation graph in the touch script representation. So then optimizations can be applied and you will see once I do a, a script and trace, it's way quicker because this is just in time compiled. And um, the difference between script and trace is trace is useful for operations that, um, uh, so trace will typically ignore your if else statements and some data structures and trace is only useful if your code only involves PyTorch operations or tensor operations. And script on the other hand can deal with branching structures and it has a subset of Python in it. So, um, so typically, you would use script rather than trace. Trace is only useful for in a limited number of scenarios if you want to get the extra performance. And um, both the methods uh, optimize your code using just-in-time compilation. So basically, when it sees your code, it compiles it uh, in touch script and then, then executes it. So let me demonstrate. So I have some code over here. I've already written it out, so... Um, we don't have to you know, spend time or look at me writing, typing it out. Uh, let me increase the screen size. And, um, oh, I forgot. So today I'm drinking Goose Island IPA. Um, I didn't have time to you know, get some nice beer, so I just grabbed whatever I could find. Oh, sorry, cheers. Um, all right, so let's first begin by importing all the crap. Once we have imported, I'll create a simple model. And this model is just a convolution layer with um, input channels three, output channels 10, filter size three. Good. Now I create my model and then I create some dummy input data. And uh, if you look at this data, I have um, batch size 10, channels three, dimension 50, 50. And then what I'll do is I do a torch dot jit dot trace so this creates the traced module so when i call um, call this i need to pass in a dummy input because this dummy input serves to create that computation graph so let's let's run this all right so um okay so i've created this traced module um, let me let's um, let's see how that traced module looks like Now, if I look at this trace module, um, basically it tells me that there is a convolution layer. And um, let's see how this output is different from the regular N output. Um, so N, my regular net looks like this. And the traced module um, you know, just contains an extra tag for the name. Now, let I don't know if it has the code. Right, so, um, well, code is not too useful. Let me see if I can pull out the graph. Right, so um, this is the internal graph. This is something like the IR representation that gets all the you know, details out um, of my representation. So um, this is the internal representation of Todd script. Good. Now, I will show you the difference because this traced module is now compiled. Uh, all the optimizations has been applied and it's been converted into touch script. And this one is in eager mode. Um, this, uh, the, the basic one is in eager mode and it's in uh, regular Python PyTorch. And this is a traced um, just in time compiled module. So here I have some timing code where I will run um, some dummy uh, inputs through, these, through this code. Um, what, 10,000 times. So let me first do it to the regular, um, uh, the regular eager execution model and time it. I, I forget what are the, um, you know, the time it, uh, does it do it in seconds, milliseconds, microseconds, I forgot. So, but anyway, uh, since we are comparing things, it doesn't matter. So I get 0 0.007. 
Now when I do it the same thing for the traced model, let's see what we get. Zero point zero zero three. So it is half this time. So it's a big improvement. So I've reduced my uh, computation time by half. That's huge. So this is what JIT buys you. And again, this was just a convolution layer. Like in 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 big pipeline models, you know, your gains could be huge or less. Um, depends. But then in production environments, that's what you would use. And now if I go back to Torch script, um, I think there is a Right, so um, I can save it and I can directly load it in C++ or anywhere else. So um, so when I do the JIT compilation, it becomes serialized and I can just save it. I don't need the you know, Python class and um, all that. Okay, so um, and the script would work in a similar fashion. So if I do script, um, this just works out of the box. And um, yeah, it's a slightly different graph, but um, you know the operation is the same. Now, now the on typically I would only use uh, script because um, script is you know it, it can deal with if else data, different data structures and it has a subset of Python built into it, so um, it's easier. Now let me show you the difference. Let's say um, um, oh. So I've just copied this code from the Python, or rather the PyTorch example. Let's say I have this function, which just tells me, you know, um, c computes the maximum of a bunch of, um, well, for, from an array, sees which one has the maximum and then returns that value back or returns the original input that has the maximum. All right, so let me run it. now. If I trace it out, there was an if else statement. Now, like I said, trace does not deal well with uh, decisions. So when I trace it out and I give it a dummy input, um, it gives me some warning. But then if I, now let's look at the graph. There is no if condition here. What, what is the graph telling me? That I take an x, that's something. I take a y, that's something. And I directly return a y. Where did my if else go? So, uh, so that's that's the not so good part about trace. However, if I just do a script on it now, and then if I look at the graph, now you can see all the maximum and the branching operations. So there's an if, and so on. So. Um, the script operation, because it has a subset of Python in it, now the compile touch script um, will have those Python branching statements or different Python commands uh, converted into that representation of touch script. So that's why uh, script is useful. And in any case, um, so when I, so just use JIT. Now you can use this as a decorator as well. Let me um, let me see if there's an example of that as a decorator. Right, so if you can directly use it as a decorator as well. Um, so this is what it buys you. Um, the uh, in TensorFlow, the JIT version is called tf.function. So you use tf.function as a decorator. Here it's torch.jit.script. Um, so um, try it out if you if you have your model. Just all because this. Um, it's not very expensive. All you have to do is just add one line, convert that into script, and then you know run it. So you might get way better performance than from your eager execution model. Um, now, when you are JIT compiled, debugging could be a bit of a pain because now you've compiled your model and you um, printing out in JIT compiled stuff, printing out is always a pain. So um, check out this documentation. They have some um, debug mode and some flags through which you can uh, extract out um, data even in JIT mode. So that will be it for this video. I know this was short because um, even I wasn't too familiar with all this JIT business. The most I've used is just uh, try it out uh, Tor JIT script. That's um, but yeah um, 
let me know uh, if you have any interesting uses or if I made any mistake in uh, my explanation. So um, that will be all for this video. See you guys next time.